Hello, this is Eric Chappelle, author of AutoCAD Civil 3D 2014 Essentials, and this is the Essentials and Beyond exercise for Chapter 9. In this exercise, we're going to open the Corridors Beyond file, which I've already opened, and we're going to create a corridor for Madison Lane, but with some changes from what we've done earlier. So the first step that we need to accomplish is as a cost-cutting measure, the developer would like to omit curb and gutter from Madison Lane and Logan Court and create a new assembly for these two roads that consists of two 12-foot lanes and a 3-foot grass strip which slopes downward at 2%. So basically we're replacing the curb and gutter with a grass strip. Easier to build a grass strip, cheaper to build a grass strip than curb and gutter. So to take care of that, we'll start by copying the assembly. Notice I'm just using the plain AutoCAD copy command and I'm copying the assembly baseline. The sub-assemblies will come with it. And now I want to delete the curb sub-assemblies out of that assembly. And then I want to insert the grass strip in their place. So I'll bring up the tool palettes and I want to find this generic tab on the tool palette and use the link width and slope subassembly. I'll click that tool, remembering our design parameters, which are three foot in width, two percent downward for the slope. And right now I'm on the left side. So I'll use the insert option and pick the lane because I want to insert it after the lane. Then I'll change the side to right, hit enter down here and do another insert on the right side. And that takes care of the first step, which is to create an alternate assembly which replaces the curb and gutter with a grass strip. Now for the next step, we want to use the red polyline near station 3 plus 0, 0 to create a pull-off area. So before we move on to that step, let's go ahead and create a corridor out of the alignment profile and, and assembly that we have for Madison Lane. So I'll launch the corridor command and my alignment is Madison Lane, my profile is Madison Lane FGCL, and my assembly is going to be Subdivision Road 2, which I'm assuming is the one that I just created because of the number 2. Really what I should do is go back and change the name of that to um, Subdivision Road without curbs or something like that target surface is EG and for now I'm not going to set baseline and region parameters because I want you to take a look at what the road looks like right now. I'll click OK and you can see the corridor that I have and if you compare the, the feature lines of this corridor you can see the two lines fairly far apart where the, sh where the grass strip is compared to the closely spaced lines where the curb and gutter is on the other road. Now what we want to do is generate this bus pull-off right here using the red polyline. So to do that, I'll click on the corridor and I'll go to Edit Targets. There's only one region, but I still have to select it, so I'll click here. That brings up my Target Mapping dialog box. So I want to adjust the right lane width. So my stationing runs from I move this dialog off to the side. My stationing runs from east to west. So the right side of the road is the north side. The right lane is the one that I want to modify. So I'm going to click and choose feature lines, survey figures, and polylines. Select from drawing. And I can go right over to this red polyline and select it. And it will use that as a transition target for the width of the right lane. So let's see if it worked. I click OK and we can see how it pushed that right lane outward and did exactly what we wanted it to do. The next step is to create a surface for the Madison Lane corridor. So I'll uh, escape out of this command, click the corridor and pick the corridor surfaces command on the ribbon, create a new surface, I'll call it um, Madison Lane FG as soon as I get my dialog box straightened out here.
and I'll tell the command that I want to use my top links as the source of data to build the surface width. So normally I would go straight to the boundaries tab knowing that I need to apply a boundary but I want you to see what the surface looks like without a boundary applied and you can see the extra surface information that really doesn't belong. The corridor has tied in along these lines so there's no need for surface information out here. This is just extraneous and incorrect information. So we'll go back into corridor surfaces, go to the boundaries tab and we'll use the corridor extents as the outer boundary. Click OK and now we've got a nice clean edge to the corridor which is what we want and if we look at the 3D view we can see that surface as well right there. So we have one last requirement for this exercise and that is use the diamond shaped grip to move the end of the Madison Lane corridor back to station 6 plus 0, 0. So if I click on the corridor the diamond shaped grip appears and I want to pull it about back to here. And what I'm doing is I'm making some room to execute the intersection command. So now that I've made that room I'll go ahead and launch the intersection command create intersection and I'm just going to kind of let the software use the defaults to build the intersection. Could easily spend hours talking about how to run the intersection command. There's a lot of things that it can do. Intersections by their nature are very compl complex designs and the tools that we're about to use for creating an intersection are also very complex. So here you can see the wizard that pops up that steps us through the intersection design process. Like I said, there's a lot going on here. I'm just going to go straight to the create intersection button and let it do its thing and generate that intersection. And there it is in plan view. There we see it in 3D view. And a whole lot of calculations just went into uh, figuring out the geometry, the 3D geometry of that intersection. So with that, that's the last step that we need to complete for, uh, for this exercise. So that concludes the Essentials and Beyond exercise for Chapter 9.